Well, good Sunday morning to you. I'm so glad you're joining us for Calvary Assembly online this morning. And uh, uh, by the way, I love that song about God doing it again. I know there are things that we want to see happen right now. We believe he's at work and that we will see those things soon. I also want to wish all the moms today a very happy Mother's Day. And uh, I imagine this is not quite how you thought this day would turn out, or you might not have certain options. Uh, maybe you were planning on going to a special place. I'm just praying that where you are today will become a special place for you. And uh, I also, for those who, who wish you were a mom, or maybe you've lost your mom, or maybe there's some distance between you and your mom, I just uh, am praying for you today that God will instill fresh hope and strength uh, to get through this day. So glad that you're with us today. Uh, this morning, we're continuing the, story, the series on the parables of Jesus. These are short stories that Jesus taught and told in order to help us understand God and his kingdom. And so today, we're going to talk about the story of the tiny seed. And not surprising, it's a really short story. It's actually only two verses long. So we're going to look in Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 31. He said, he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. And though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Um, a season like the one we're in can stretch us and stress us in ways that um, we're not really prepared for. And we can feel at least get to the place where we feel like we're tempted to give up on some things. So it's a question that I want to ask you this, this morning. What's something that you are tempted to give up on? Uh, maybe for some people it's a marriage. Um, things were wonderful. There's been a trajectory that's not great. Maybe this increased time of stress has made things all the more difficult. And you're wondering if this thing can go the distance. Or maybe you're giving up on having a friend. The only real connections that you seem to find are the more casual ones where you're working on something together or you're having a conversation about something in common. But it never seems to go any deeper. And you're wondering if maybe you're just kind of destined to live life on the lonely side. Uh, maybe you're giving up on a future. Um, you keep trying and trying different things. And you always wind up with the same results. And that can be incredibly discouraging, and you just wonder, you know, maybe I should just give up on hoping anything will ever be different. And then there's the temptation to give up on yourself. And I think of all the things, that's the biggest one. It's the one that we don't notice very much, but everyone around us will. And so this morning, I would like to talk to you about a story that Jesus told that actually encourages us not to give up. At the, at the time when we feel like maybe I can't go on anymore, Jesus wants us to know that we don't have to give up. So there were some followers of Jesus, and they were, they were a little bit discouraged. They loved the teaching of Jesus, but nothing seemed to be changing around them. There were political systems. They were living in a country that was occupied by Rome. And nothing seemed to be changed. They still had to pay outrageous taxes. They still had military marching in their streets. They still had problems that they had to contend with. Nothing was seeming to get better. People showed up and listened to Jesus. Nothing was changing. And then there were religious systems. And religious systems uh, seemed to be stacked against people too. They seemed to be taken advantage of in some situations and looked down on in other situations. Only a few people were considered good enough. And so they were frustrated. Good teaching, no difference. That'll always be a source of frustration in our life. The thing that I want you to see this morning is that things can get bad in a hurry. Things can get bad in a hurry, but it usually takes time for things to get better. Let me say that again. Things can get bad in a hurry, but it usually takes time for things to get better. So while we're trying to be patient and we're tempted to give up, we can make an assumption. And the assumption is that things would get better faster 
if I had more faith, if my faith were stronger, if my faith were larger. And this misunderstanding of faith can generate a lot of self-doubt. And if you think coronavirus is contagious, you should see what self-doubt does. It's unbelievable how contagious it is and how much damage it does to us. Self-doubt and the temptation to give up. These are the reasons that Jesus tells us the story of the tiny seed. And there's three takeaways that I want us to see in this very short story about a tiny seed. And the first thing is this. Great things usually begin as small things. Great things usually begin as small things. Like, for example, today is Mother's Day, and uh, no one was born into this world as a full-grown adult. They, they come in as, as pretty small infants, and so great things usually begin as small things. Remember, the stories that Jesus teach us and the, the stories that he tells are designed to inform us and give us insight into God and how his kingdom works. And so what he tells us is, is God is in the business of planting small, tiny seeds in you. And there's a purpose, because he wants to show others what he can do. If you look at much of scripture, you see this as an example. A tiny baby was born in Bethlehem, which was a tiny town. And what we begin to discover is that something happened out of all of that tininess that would transform lives and impact the world. Uh, there would be a single cross and a sealed tomb. It doesn't look like much from a, a view of far away. And yet, that cross and that tomb have had an impact that's very hard to calculate in our world. Uh, there were a small group of followers who would huddle around Jesus and listen to the words that he say, said and tried to be obedient to the commands that he gave. And it's hard to imagine when they were just sitting around and, and having a quiet conversation late into the evening that much would come out of that. And yet out of those small groups and those small conversations, a church was birthed. And it exploded all through our world. Uh, a small thing actually can have a lot of potential. And that's what Jesus wants us to see. So great things usually begin as small things. Second takeaway from this story I'd like you to see is that it is the object of our faith, not the size of our faith that makes a difference. Let me say that again. It's the object of our faith, not the size of our faith that makes the difference. See, sometimes our faith really isn't in God. Our faith is in ourselves. We think we have the talents or the strength or the tenacity or the abilities in order to get something done. And I don't want to diminish or demean anything of your capacity. But the simple truth is we will all face situations that will be bigger than we are. And in those moments, we will be tempted to give up. Our faith cannot be in ourselves. Our faith cannot be in our faith. Sometimes people think if my faith were bigger, if my faith were better, then my, I, more would happen. It's not the size of your faith that makes the difference. It's what your faith is in that makes the difference. And our faith is in Christ. It's Christ that makes the difference. And it doesn't much matter whether you have a whole lot of faith or a very little faith. He said even the smallest amount of faith can make the very biggest of differences. In fact, when you look at ministries in our world, every single ministry that is making a huge difference in our world actually started small. There are ministries that feed millions of people every single day around our world. People who, without that nutrition, they would not survive. How did that happen? Did all of a sudden there was just a huge ministry that was providing all of this? No. There was a few people, a small hope, in the midst of a dire situation, and they began to do something. And they didn't look to their own resources themselves or the connections that they had. They looked to Christ. And look what God has done with it. Uh, there, are, there are ministries that, that minister to young adults in college campuses all over the globe, millions of people being reached. That didn't start with all of those campuses being opened at once. That started with the very simple truth that a couple of college students got together and they began to talk about scripture and about Christ 
And something began to ignite within them. And they began to share that. And look how it has grown. It's unbelievable how God has grown those things. If they had focused on themselves, if they had focused on their available resources, if they had focused on the connections that they had, they would have given up. But they didn't. Their faith wasn't in themselves or what they had. Their faith was in Jesus. And so seeds were planted. And I think God wants us to plant seeds. So the question that's really worth asking is, so how do you plant seeds like that? And the answer is, in prayer. We plant tiny seeds through prayer. Prayer assumes two things. It assumes, first of all, we don't have enough, and it assumes that God can make the difference. And with those two assumptions, we can plant what seems like tiny seeds, but it can make a world of difference. Maybe you're going through a season where you're not very happy about your own personal growth. In fact, under these stressful times, you may feel like you've even taken a step back. A lot of times, uh, we assess ourselves and say, well, maybe I really didn't grow at all. I was, I was fooling myself. It's just that things were easier. I haven't really become a, a braver person or a more hopeful person or a more honest person. Or I haven't really learned to deal with uh, the anger issues in my life. And this is what I would want you to know, is that whenever we see the smallness of our capacity, we will be tempted to give up. Whenever we see the slowness of our growth, we will be tempted to give up. And Jesus tells us the story of the tiny seed. That there's this tiny seed that God has planted in you. And it is growing. And it is going to make a difference. Just remember, you are not what you were. And you are not what you are going to be. The truth is, is that God is at work in you right now. This is what it says in Philippians, the first chapter. Being confident of this, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. What God began in you might seem like a small thing, like the smallest of hopes, the smallest of dreams, the smallest of visions, and yet God can use that to do the most incredible things. God begins with small. God is not finished. That's the takeaway. Just because it's small right now doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. God wants to illustrate his power through the small things and through the small beginnings. If we came at everything with already finished products, all we would do is just take credit for that. But when we begin with small things, small hopes, small prayers, small dreams, small resources, and we watch what God grows through it, then we have to give God credit for it. Now, I know you're not perfect, and you should know God is not surprised. God is not waiting until we are perfect, until we are complete, in order to do a significant work in our lives and through our lives. The third takeaway from this story is God's growth in you is attractive to those who are about to give up. God's growth in you is attractive to those who are about to give up. We're surrounded by discouraged people. We can't always tell. We become very good at hiding certain things. We, have, we can have people all around us. They're ready to throw in the towel. They're ready to give up. And what they need is a branch to land on something where they can find some footing and some shade. And that's the story of the tiny seed. This tiny little mustard seed winds up becoming the largest of garden plants. And it's so significant that birds will not only land on its branches, but they'll actually build nests in it. God wants us to know that the growth that he is doing in us is actually attractive to the people who are discouraged. And there's lots of those right now. Now, here's the challenge. We can start feeling responsible for that. We can start being worried. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for other people who are discouraged and whether they give up or not. And this is what I want you to remember. The same God that planted a tiny seed in you will plant a tiny seed in them. Having a place to land, a conversation that feels safe, a small, quiet prayer, 
These are the seeds that can make all the difference. You're not responsible for all God is going to do in their life. But you can be a place where they can land for a moment and find some kind of refuge. So I'd like to uh, just take a moment and pray with you today. If you are thinking about just giving up, backing away, walking away, I would like to encourage you. you Find a quiet time with God. Pray the best prayer you can. And I know you might think it's not good enough. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in our faith. Our faith is not in our language or the sound of our prayers or whether someone else approves of them. Our faith is in the one who, when he hears our voice, he responds every time. So, Father, we look to you today. Um, We're stretched. We're stressed. Um, We're not sure how some things are going to turn out. And when we try to see that far into the future, things might look a little dark and a little bleak to us. Would you help us? Rather than looking to the future based on our abilities, would you help us receive even the tiniest seed of faith that you want to plant into our heart today? It doesn't matter how small it feels to us. It will grow into something significant, so significant, that it will actually be a source of encouragement to others. We thank you for doing that. In Jesus' name, amen.